Hey, everybody, and welcome. I'm so glad to be able to teach you some emotional freedom techniques. I know you're here for a reason, and that reason is so you can empower yourself to do some of your own emotional work around past, present, and future things that are creating stress, overwhelm, grief, annoyance, whatever it is in your life. So I'm so excited to be able to help you. Thank you for coming. We're going to run the show reel, and then we'll get started. I promise this whole video is not going to be a PowerPoint, but I'm going to pop it up every once in a while just to show you a couple of things. So once again, my name is Dawn Bennett, and here are some of the goals that we're going to be going through today. I want you to know that when I say EFT or tapping or emotional freedom techniques, I'm talking about all the same thing because not all tapping is emotional freedom techniques or EFT but all EFT is often called tapping or EFT tapping. And we use it to create really powerful change in our emotional states. And under and I want you to understand how else can you use this? So not only how do you sit and sit there in your house and do the EFT for yourself when you're stressed out, but how can you calm and navigate emotions perhaps when you're in an argument with your partner or when you're getting stressed out at work in a way that's subtle and effective? I want you to be able to use this for yourself, but also there are times when people need to use a professional. So we're going to go through that a little bit as well today. Emotional freedom techniques is a series of techniques. There's a whole group of them. That's why there's an S behind the name. Today, I'm going to teach you basic. It's the most simple, the most straightforward, clinically based EFT that we use. So this is one they're doing the research on. In fact, Peter Stapleton in Australia actually found that EFT reduces the stress hormone cortisol by 37% and decreases anxiety by 40% in one of her studies. It's found to be more quick than cognitive behavioral therapy, although that's really valuable as well, but you can work with it yourself. We are gonna talk about when you're not gonna work with it yourself, but when you do work with it, you will start seeing things from a newer, from a healthier perspective. You'll be able to find compassion, empathy, and forgiveness. So what do we use EFT for? We use it for discharging and neutralizing our emotions around current, past, and future events, controlling or eliminate cravings, decreasing physical discomfort, reducing fears and phobias, and helping people find the blocks behind their affirmations or goals. Be honest with me. Is there something you're trying to manifest? Is there something that you see in your life that you want to be better? Of course, that's why you're here, right? Now imagine this, our mind is producing emotion. It's creating situations all day long. So if you threw your mind up on a giant movie screen all the way around you, how long would you want to be in that movie? Because that's what we're manifesting. That's what we're bringing to reality. Whatever you focus on is what comes to us. And they say in neurolinguistic programming and NLP, some of the work I do, our focus determines our behavior. And of course, whatever behavior is, is going to determine our growth, our results. So we need to have an active focus by clearing the quote unquote negative emotions or the emotions that are really distracting you from moving forward from having motivation, having power and positivity in your day-to-day -day life, you're going to be able to manifest. You're going to be able to clear some negativity. So you have confidence, calmness, clarity around what's going on. And when you have clarity around what's going on, you can actually make choice from your heart. You can make choice from your center rather than reacting over committing, saying yes, when you mean to say no. So when do you want to work with a professional? And this can be a professional of any kind, not just an EFT professional. Anyone that does deep levels of healing, counselors, psychologists, mental health professionals, uh, master results coaches like I am, anybody that can help support you in a really safe way. So when you experience or witness a terrifying event, please don't work on that on your own. Please get support. When you're having uncontrollable thoughts, feelings of severe anxiety, nightmares, flashbacks, or if it feels too emotionally overwhelming to work with yourself. There are some things that when we start working, our heads just spin. Have you ever had that where you're trying to think through a situation or a process 
and you find yourself making up these stories or making up, well, what should I have said? Or what should I have done? Or, you know, when I see that person next, X, Y, Z is going to happen. That's a really great place to get some support. If you've had a lot of trauma, a lot of abuse, or if you've been working with things yourself and you're not seeing results, some people just come to me because they want accountability. They want regular practice and they know that if they're seeing me, they're going to have those results faster. Three recordings for change. First of all, clean up your past. This includes the negative emotions, the limiting decisions. A lot of these things, I'll be honest with you, were created without your awareness from ages seven and before. There are things that you saw your parents do or overheard. These include your beliefs about what relationships should look like, what your money should look like, how successful you can be in your career, how you're supposed to act, right? Um, your own self-confidence, self-worth. Am I lovable? Am I valuable? Am I good enough? That imposter syndrome, all of those things were placed in us before the age of seven. And now our unconscious mind right? Because we have our conscious mind, which is our thinking brain and our unconscious mind, which is the part of our brain that runs everything else, our breathing, how we interact with the world, how we decide to do things or not do things, how we react to certain situations. All of that is run by our unconscious. When we're trying to consciously force something to happen, it's pretty hard, isn't it? Like, have you ever tried to go work out? Or you've tried to do something over and over again, and it takes thought and effort, and then you don't do it. You get in the cycle. So when we work unconsciously instead, now we actually have the driving system of our brain moving the show, and things become much more easy, much more powerful. And you can get the results that you want. So when you focus on what you want, which we've always already talked about, and start dedicating some time, money, and energy, you start enforcing your boundaries around your resources, right? How do you know how to focus? How do you know how to think so you know what to do? When we have pain, it's usually our emotions or our body or something telling us, pay attention. Something is not right. Something is not aligned whether it's physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, financial pain. If you also want 10,000 times more positive focus to remove that self-motivation and ability to change your repetitive behaviors, consider looking at my self-hypnosis classes, which I also teach online. And you can actually learn how to retrain your unconscious mind yourself as well. But back to the whole reason why we're here, which is emotional freedom techniques. So as I mentioned, the five C's of EFT, calmness around the situation. So we have less stress. It's hard to be stressed out and logically thinking at the same time. So when we have calm, we start getting clarity. We remove any of the triggers. We start having courage and confidence and we can choose what we want to do in the situation, which is amazing. Here's how you're going to do EFT for yourself. First, you're going to create a setup statement. Now, there's a PDF in the description here on YouTube below. If you're my client, you already got it emailed to you. It's on my website. So there's a lot of places where you can find it that goes exactly through everything I'm going to say right now. So you can stop, you can print it up, whatever you need to do. So first, we're going to identify a specific event in time. Now, when I say event, I mean any situation. Okay, and the situation needs to be really specific. In fact, the more specific you make it, the more powerful EFT tapping is going to be for it. So for example, let's say I'm thinking about fighting with my sister two weeks ago, right? You can picture that. You might be able to picture me fighting with my sister two weeks ago. But if I say, oh yeah, I fight with my sister. Well, what does that look like? Does that look like, or I had a fight, if I just say I had a fight with my sister, what does that look like? When I was four, when I was two, when I was eight? When I was 10, when I was 50, right? Do you get what I'm saying? So the same thing with the brain. When we are working with emotions, we want to be as specific as possible. Otherwise, a couple of things can happen. Number one, if I tap on all the times that I fought with my sister at the same time, either nothing's going to happen because my brain doesn't even know where to start, or 
I'm going to become emotionally overwhelmed, right? Because all the emotions are going to come up at once. My brain doesn't know how to clear it. So the more specific you can be, the better. So thinking about a situation time. So let's take this example of, of fighting with my sister two weeks ago. Okay. So thinking about that situation, how do I feel about it right now? And maybe back then I was angry when I was fighting with her, but now I feel sad. When I use the setup statement, I'm going to write down sadness because sadness is my brain access to it. Next step, I want you to evaluate the level of emotion you're feeling from zero, meaning non-existent, all the way up to 10, meaning it's overwhelming. So we're trying to get down to a zero, which is why the zero exists. We always want to tap down to three or less before we move on to another situation or another um, event because we're trying, we want to get to zero if we can, because we're trying to clear as much of it as possible, knowing that the brain puts things in boxes. So even if I'm tapping on that situation with my sister two weeks ago, my brain's probably already clearing a few other fights that we had, maybe a fight I had with my mom and maybe a fight I had with an ex-boyfriend or something, right? So know that when you're doing really specific work, it's actually also clearing some of the associated incidents that it's put in that same box. All right, I got a little sidetracked. So we've got our event, right? So write down your event if you can right now. Write down the emotion that you're feeling right now, thinking about it. Evaluate that level of emotion from zero to 10. And the next part of your setup statement is going to be where in your body do you feel it? So if you pause and take a breath, where do you feel it? Is there a tension in your neck? Maybe it's a heaviness in your chest. Maybe you're just feeling a little restless and you notice you want to wiggle in your chair. Pay attention to that. Is it in your hip? Is it in your glutes? Is it in your belly? Maybe there's a little tingling in one toe, or maybe you're feeling a little spacey, like it's a little bit out here. So if there's a place in your body, that's the next part. If you're not feeling it anywhere, that's okay. Just skip it. You always want to have the emotion. You always want to have the situation. But sometimes we don't feel things in our body and that's okay because it's not safe to be in our body or we're just not very kinesthetic people. No big deal. We just skip that. All right. So now we've constructed the first half of our setup statement, even though is how it starts. <clears throat> I'm feeling whatever emotion in whatever body part, thinking about my situation. Okay. And you can obviously you can change the order of those as I just did. The second half of our setup statement is a positive affirmation. Like I deeply and completely accept myself. We're trying to tell our brain like, Hey, even though there's this like really thing that's keeping us stressed that we really don't like, and it's creating all this emotion in us, it's going to be okay. Or it is okay, actually. So I deeply and completely accept myself as the one that we use. If you've watched other videos on YouTube, you may have seen the word love thrown in there. Um, clinical EFT practitioners tend to avoid the, use, the word love because it's got so many nuances and triggers for a lot of people. And triggers, I mean, positive and negative triggers, right? It brings up a lot of thought, a lot of emotion, a lot of associations. We tend to avoid it if possible. Now, the most important thing with EFT is that it resonates with you. If saying, I deeply and completely accept myself does not hold true, then you're going to use something different. Positive, present. So I'm open to accepting myself is one. I accept I feel this way. I accept the situation or I'm open to accepting the situation. I honor that I feel this way. For people that have a strong religious or spiritual background, they'll often use their God. So some people say, God loves me anyway. Or kids will often say things like, uh, my mommy loves me anyway, or my daddy loves me anyway. Um, and it doesn't even have to say anyway, my mommy loves me, my daddy loves me, my dog loves me. So as long as it's positive and present, not anything that's like, I hope to get over this, or I'm gonna try to move through this, those are very strongly positive. We want something really, really positive and powerful. So write down now for you a couple of statements that feel really strong that you can use as acceptance statements. And rewind this a little bit if you need to go through those again. And now we have our full setup statement. So even though I'm feeling this emotion in my body part, 
thinking about my situation, I deeply and completely accept myself or I'm open to accepting myself, all the things, okay? So that is our setup statement. Remember, our situation, our event can be past, it can be present, or it can be future. Probably should have said that before. <laughs> so past is like what I'm talking about right now. Present means, oh my gosh, I'm staring at my computer, looking at my bank account, and there's only $30 left. Oh my gosh. Even though I'm feeling anxiety rise in my chest, looking at my bank statement right now, because there's only $30. I accept I feel this way, right? So that would be our setup statement. Future, even though I feel nervous in my stomach, thinking about speaking in front of 100 people next week, I accept I feel this way. Or even though I feel um, fear in my gut, thinking about having to have that difficult conversation with my partner tomorrow. I accept I feel this way, right? So you can use it because your brain can't tell the difference between past, present, and future. Did you know that? That's why we can think of something in the past and still feel it in our body or think about something in the future and still feel it in our body. Emotional stress creates body symptoms sometimes, right? Our body pain is trying to get us to be aware of things. I'm not saying all pain is caused by emotion. Definitely, if you have weird pains that are unusual for you, go get them checked out by a medical doctor. And it can also be an indicator of emotional suppression. There's a lot of great books on it. You can look at Peter Levine, uh, Bessel van der Kolk. You can look at some of Gabor Mate's work, um, Bruce Lipton's Biology of Belief. They're all really great books. And they all talk about different aspects of um, emotions, uh, Gabor is a little bit more right about addiction, but he still brings up some of those concepts anyway. So back to our setup statement. So when we do our setup statement, we say it while we tap the side of the hand and now it doesn't matter what hand you tap, you can tap the left, the right, you can alternate through. And so go ahead and tap along with me and get the points down. So tapping on the side of your hand. And just use my mind for an example right now. So even though I feel sadness in my chest, thinking about fighting with my sister two weeks ago, I deeply and completely accept myself. And even though I feel sadness in my chest, thinking about fighting with my sister two weeks ago, I deeply and completely accept myself. And even though I feel sadness in my chest. Thinking about fighting with my sister two weeks ago, I deeply and completely accept myself. Great. So now the rest of the points are reminder phrases. We're just gonna say the emotion and the body part if it's present. So the first part is the top of the head. Feeling sadness in my chest. The second point is right between the eyebrow, right at the corner. So you can tap one side, you can tap both sides. You can tap both sides of both hands. It doesn't matter. Whatever feels right for you. Sadness in my chest. The next point is the side of the eye, right at the temple. So if you're wearing glasses, you can tap above, you can tap below your glasses. doesn't matter. It vibrates through the bones. One side, both sides. Okay, whatever feels right for you. Once again, sadness in the chest. Good. Next part is under the eye, right on the cheekbone. Sadness in my chest. Good. The next spot is between the nose and the mouth. Sadness in the chest. The next spot is between the mouth and the, and the chin. Sadness in my chest. The next spot is below the collarbones. So if you find that soft spot in your collarbones, right about there, this is a point that we do want to tap both sides. So you can tap it with both hands. You can tap it with one hand if that feels better for you. Some people just like beating their fist on their chest, whatever works. Sadness in my chest. And the last part is under the arms. So you can just reach around, tap the side of your rib cage, do it both sides, sadness in my, I almost said sadness in my arms, sadness in my chest. Or you can do it when, you know, uh, reaching. I always tell kids like, just act like a monkey. Right? 
sadness in my chest. Then you're going to take a deep breath or a breath. Have a little bit of water. And now you're going to reevaluate. And you can look at actually the sheet that you already wrote down with your emotions and your situation. Did anything change? Now, I know we've been tapping on my stuff, but often the brain has associations. So when you're tapping on your own stuff, what you want to notice is, did the emotion level change? So in other words, if I start with the seven of sadness in my chest, did it go down? That's what we'd ideally like to have. Now, sometimes it goes up. And that's okay. Just know that like, because if, for example, if I was at work and my boss was screaming at me and I had a bunch of anger, but I couldn't express the anger because I might lose my job if I yell at my boss, I'm going to suppress that stuff, right? So I'm going to push it way, way, way down there so I can function all day at work. And then I get home and I start tapping on this anger at my boss. And I think it's only a four, but all of a sudden comes right back out, right? That's okay. So just keep tapping until it goes down. If the numbers keep going up, you're working on something too big. In other words, it's too much for your brain to process. So for an example, if that happened when I was talking about fighting with my sister and it went from a seven to a nine, okay, well, I know it's pretty specific, but maybe we fought all day long. Maybe it was some passive aggressive text fight argument and there's all these nuances to it. But pay attention. A, can you bring it down to a smaller situation? Make sure you're avoiding the words always or never or like last time or like they always do, right? That brings in all the rest of the moments. So keep it really focused on that one moment. And look and see what is it about that situation that's really emotional for you? So for example, maybe my sister said, oh, you're acting just like mom. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe she said I'm acting just like mom, right? It's really like, that's what really got me. Okay, so now that's my new event. So even though when I think about my sister saying, you're acting just like mom, what do I feel? Oh, I feel uh, frustration. Where is it? Mm, it's still in my chest. Okay, what level? It's at an eight, okay? Now, even though I feel frustration in my chest, remembering when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I deeply and completely accept myself. Maybe for you, it was a tone of voice, a body posture. Maybe it's that it's a little bit deeper. Maybe you're not frustrated. Maybe you actually feel unloved by the fact that your partner did or didn't do something. So just pay attention and see how much you can narrow it down. Okay. So let's go through a couple of rounds together. You can repeat after me using my situation, just knowing that you are working with the one on your sheet. So starting on the side of the hand, just to get this in your neurology system, just to get this takes two to three times for everybody to be confident in something is how we create confidence and skill. So side of the hand, and you can repeat after me, even though I feel frustrated in my chest, thinking about when mom said you're acting. Oh, when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I feel frustrated in my chest. Remembering when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I deeply and completely accept myself. And even though I feel frustrated in my chest. Thinking about when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I'm open to letting this go. Great. Top of the head. Frustration in my chest. Good. Between the eyes. Frustration in my chest. Lovely. Side of the eyes. Frustration in my chest. Good. Under the eyes. Frustration in my chest. Good. Under the eyes. Frustration in my chest. Mm -hmm. Under the mouth, frustration in my chest. Good. And the collarbones, frustration in my chest. Good. And under the arms, frustration in my chest. Good. And now you're learning all of these things. And see how easy it is to let go of your emotions once you start learning this process? 
Good. So now you would reevaluate. How strong is the emotion? We want to get it down to zero, if possible. Has the emotion changed? So this can happen sometimes where we're tapping on frustration or we're tapping on sadness and we get done and we're like, oh, I'm not frustrated anymore. And now I'm angry or now I'm mm, sad. Okay. As long as the number changes or the emotion changes or the body part changes, we know we've done an effective round. Okay. So remember when I said, if nothing changes, you want to look and see, okay, why did nothing change? Maybe it's too big of a situation. Maybe I need to narrow it down. So the three things that we want to change are either the number to change, the body part to change, or the emotion to change, or more of those. That's how we know we're doing an effective round. So now I'm tuning back in. Okay. So thinking about that situation, what am I feeling? Mm, now I'm just feeling a little bit sad in my stomach at a level two. All right. Let's do another round just to get it in your neurology. Side of the hand. Even though I feel sad in my stomach. Thinking about when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I'm open to letting this go. And even though I feel sad in my stomach. Thinking about when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I accept I feel this way. And even though I feel sadness in my stomach. Thinking about when my sister said, you're acting just like mom. I deeply and completely accept myself. Good. Top of the head. Sadness in my stomach. Between the eyes. Sadness in my stomach. Side of the eyes. Sadness in my stomach. Under the eyes. Sadness in my stomach. Under the nose. Sadness in my stomach. Under the mouth. Sadness in my stomach. Collarbones, sadness in my stomach. And under the arm, sadness in my stomach. Lovely. Great job. Now that you have a sense of EFT and what it can do, I'm going to pop through my slides here real quick. So remember that when you're doing the event, specific and detailed. Oh, that's still in there. The first half honors what is. The second half is a self-acceptance phrase. This basic full EFT process with pictures is on that PDF that you can find down below in YouTube or that's mailed to you if you're a client. So the best way to use EFT is going to be daily. So I encourage you when you are driving home from work, if you've had a frustrating day at work, you can tap. Even though I feel like right, you can have your hand on the steering wheel. If it feels dangerous, tap your hand. You're feeling it right now. You can literally, this is another way to use EFT. You can literally just tap through the points and breathe. Wow, today was really rough by work. Oh, I can't believe that person said that to me. All right, well, I'm driving home to my family and I'm excited. You know, so you can actually just tap through the points and just feel the emotions that you're feeling and allow them to soften. Keep breathing and just tap through, okay? So that's one really great way to use EFT. Another way to use EFT, we call it kind of stealth tapping. So let's say you're in a meeting with your boss on Zoom or a meeting with your partner and something's happening. You can't exactly be like, look, look what you're making, look what you're making me do. Like this is how upset I am right now, right? You can't do that. I can't do that. So if you're on Zoom, if you're on a place where perhaps your hands are under a table, they can't see you, you can literally be just be tapping your fingertips together. Another thing that you can do is you can tap the side of your leg. So right where your hand drops on the side of your leg naturally, that's a tapping point. So you can tap that while you're sitting there. Nobody knows. People think you're just futzy. Just make little tapping noises like you're drumming on your leg and it'll help calm you down. Another thing that you can do is actually rub the points. And we also use this for people, for kids, especially that have sensory disorders, like tapping's way too intense for them. So instead we can rub or we can touch. So I know that you're wondering like, how does that help different than tapping? Think about it. What happens when we're stressed out? What do people often do? Oh my gosh, my day. And they rub their eyes and they do, oh my gosh, you would not believe what happened to me today. 
when we're mad, what do we do? Cross our hands, where our hands go, right? Like, yes, that's a protective mechanism on our chakras as well. And we also are hitting those chest points. So some of these are natural points. So you can sit there and be like, oh, really? Hmm. Well, you're arguing with your spouse, your partner. Oh, really? That's, hmm. I think I'm gonna need to think about that for a while. And you can use it to regulate and breathe. And remember, then you can come from clarity and confidence and choice instead of anger, fear, frustration, feeling less than, All right? So stealth tapping, just feel free to use it. Just touch a few points. Hmm. Maybe your glasses, maybe you have to wiggle your glasses around a little bit. So use tapping in whatever way possible. You don't have to hit all the points. You don't have to say all the words. It's better if you do, according to, you know, the way that we're researching it, it seems better if we do. However, you know, there's not a lot of money out there for research. So we haven't evaluated one against each other. So play with it, play with it yourself. When you're feeling stressed out, if you're on a phone call and they're making you upset, whether that upset be grief, sadness, you find out someone's died, right? You can just sit there and tap and just be present with your emotions. Remember, emotion is energy in motion. We want to feel all of our emotions. Emotions are good. Anger is good. Rage is good. Shame is good. As long as we let them move through us and let go. Hanging on to negative emotion or emotion that um, when we choose not to come from a place of letting go and ease and flow, that's where we start having blockages. That's when we start bringing in things that aren't so healthy for us right? I mean, think about it. You can't even stay happy forever. So all emotions change. Change is the only constant. So allow all of these things to shift, to move through you and know that you're doing yourself and your body a really big favor by breathing, tapping, using self-hypnosis, whatever it is for you that allows these things to move through. So I have my event right there. If you want more support, please look at my website. Currently it's touchremedies.com. You can WhatsApp and text me. Um, I give everybody a complimentary half an hour session to find out what's going on with them. How can I help them even further? And here's one of my favorite quotes. Healing may not be so much about getting better as about letting go of everything that isn't you. All of the expectations, all of the beliefs and becoming who you are. So thank you for joining me on this course. Enjoy. Remember, you are love. You are loving. You are lovable. I'll have a six-minute version of this video. Please subscribe and like the channel so that way you can find this video and others again. Namaste.